Hey guys, Travis Cook here of Learning How to Think. And it's the 28th of September, 2020. And it appears the Tory rebellion has been defeated by one swift move from the Speaker of the House, Sir Lindsay. Um, however, it's quite, quite interesting now because this amendment that was put forward essentially would have been like a slightly tailored, ver um, you know, a different version of the coronavirus act that we is already in place but now the fact that it wasn't allowed to pass means that essentially it's a gamble because uh now the parliament could just vote entirely against the renewal of the act completely which would totally that's it game over at that point there is no more rushing out laws within three hours when everybody's asleep at fucking two o'clock on a, on a monday on a monday morning uh, that's it. It's back to normal in Parliament, and the Coronavirus Act is gone, and they're going to have to. They're, they're, they're gonna, I don't know what they could do at that point because already they're having trouble getting people to comply. So if they can't even create these fucking laws out of thin air in two hours, whilst they're sitting on the toilet having a shit, I don't know. What, I don't know how the fuck this process has been, been done. Um, but what, what they <laughs> they can't just create a law when Bill Gates sends them a text. Hey, so, you know what I mean? It's gonna have to back to how it should be. So this Wednesday is very crucial, everyone. We're gonna have to watch what happens there because uh, very interesting to see. I mean, this could this could just be deliberately created to to show uh, like optics wise. It could be like, oh yeah, look, there was this rebellion, but it was crushed, and now it's gonna get renewed again. So now. You know, there's nothing you can do. That might be the the agenda that's trying to be pushed out there. But to me, it seems pretty genuine that there are actually people in the government that had a fuck enough. I mean, I've even seen um, a, a letter. So there's been a huge surge of people writing to their MPs and, um, to, you know, talking to them, trying to get some sense into them. And uh, it's really great to see that. Here, check out this letter right here. So, dear Lee, thanks for contacting me about some COVID-19 restrictions being reintroduced in England. I am not convinced. Neither am I convinced the pandemic emergency legislation should be renewed. You may be interested to know that I am supporting an amendment in Parliament which would give the House of Commons greater ability to hold a uh, government to account in this regard. And it goes on to say that their concerns are that they, you know, they're potentially damaging the civil liberties, the economic impact is worse than the virus, etc, etc. And so, but the amendment, of course, didn't go through. So now it's just all in. They're going to have, and I can't, I would be amazed if it actually uh, does go through. So we'll see what happens. And uh, also I have this amazing clip. Uh, this is the best thing I've ever seen come out of the House of Commons ever. This guy absolutely smashed it. Right, and just check out this clip. Less than a year ago, I celebrated what I thought was the election of a sceptical and liberal Conservative administration. And now I'm left wondering if the Prime Minister hasn't been abducted by Dr. Strangelove and reprogrammed by the sage over to the dark side. The purpose of politicians is to impose a measure of um, proportion, a sense of proportion on science and not to be enthralled to it. Now I will make myself very unpopular, but I believe that the appearance of the chiefs last week should have been a sacking offence. When they presented that graph, oh with the caveat that it wasn't a prediction, but nevertheless it was clear that they presented it as a plausible scenario with its 50,000 cases per day by mid-October based on the doubling of infections by the week. Not once, not on one day since March have there been infections on that day that were double that of the day of the week proceeding. Not once. Where did this doubling come from? What was their purpose in presenting such a graph? It was the purpose of the fat boy in Pickwick Papers. I want to make your flesh creep. 
It was Project Fear. It was an attempt to terrify the British people as if they hadn't been terrified enough. Now, I've been banging on about this since March, and every criticism I've, been, I've made, I've been told that the government was relying on the best possible science. So I am delighted by the letter one week ago today, the nuanced criticism of Professors Hennigan, Gupta and Sikora. And I believe that it is now the government that has to answer that criticism. I'm glad that the consensus in the scientific community is broken and the critics are speaking out. I don't underestimate for one moment the horrible nature of this disease and its post-viral syndrome. But in terms of the United Kingdom's killers, it is 24th in the league, accounting, to only one, accounting for only 1.4 of us. And as a consequence, I believe that the government's policy has been disproportionate. By decree, it has interfered in our private lives and our family lives, telling who we may meet, when we may meet them, and what we must wear when we meet them. We have the cruelty, the cruelty of elderly people in care homes, disoriented, being unable to see the faces of their loved ones and to receive a hug. We have the tsunami of deaths that we may, we may uh, experience shortly as a consequence of undiagnosed cancers and heart disease and the discontinuation of clinical trials. I give away to my right honourable friend. Friend looked at the advice given to the Swedish government and the different policies they followed and what does he deduce from that? I, I deduce that they, that was much more proportionate. Of course, all sorts of criticisms are levied against the Swedish government that on examination of the data and comparing like for like actually are, are without, without foundation. I, I certainly uh, hold up the Swedish model as an alternative. The, we have seen the eye-watering costs that we must now all face for a generation uh, having closed down our economy for uh, the, all those months as a consequence of the government's policy. The, the crushing of enterprises, the, um, the, 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 the destruction of livelihoods, the, 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 the unemployment that we're going to have to face now amongst young people, all as a consequence of an overaction. I understand now there's some question as to whether students are to be allowed to return from university at Christmas. Can I say most gently to my honourable friend on the front bench that the last administration that sought to restrain celebrations at Christmas was during the Commonwealth, when the Lord Protector, as a consequence, was left musing in public as to whether if he were to arm one in ten that would be enough. How many marshals will be required? I conclude by saying that the policy of the government has been disproportionate in response to this threat. There may, Madam Deputy Speaker, be a, a virus one day that threatens our very way of life. But this isn't it even if we're behaving as if it were. Just the way he spoke, that it was just so eloquent and so powerful, and that is the epitome of British mind. That is beautiful. The way he said it, his presence, his words, his accent, everything about it, that is what British politicians should be like. It's beautiful. That's like remnants of old when I imagine there was honor and uh, and valor and, and all of this stuff that actually was wrapped up in being a politician. I, I, he is beautiful. I love that. So uh, very, very inspiring to see that. And talking of inspiration, just today, right, uh, on my lunch break, I went to go get some fish and chips. Very British. And I'm, I'm in the queue and I'm, uh, I just get up to the, the counter and uh, not wearing a mask, of course. 
and uh, I, I start to do my order, and as I'm in the process, this uh, this guy, you know, does the bins, so he must know the the woman, and he, he sort of the first thing he just comes in, he's like, "Hey, you're right. Uh, do you think we're gonna have another lockdown?" And I'm standing there like, "This is just perfect. Like, this is just destiny for this guy to come in and say this." And the the woman at the counter was like, "Oh well, I hope not. I mean." And I'm straight away, I'm like, nah, no way, bro. There's no way we're going to have a lockdown. And so I do my order and I have to wait outside and he's doing the bins. And then we start getting chatting. I know he's this really loud guy and, and, um, so like, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you think this will be lockdown? I'm like, nah, no way, no way, no way. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't think there's any point in this anyway. You know, it's bullshit. It's like, we don't need this. It's, 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 it's the lockdown's causing more damage. And I'm like, fuck me. This is a bin man. I mean, this is your guy on the street telling me this. I'm just like, holy shit, that is fucking powerful. And we're talking, I'm like, yeah, man, and you heard about hydroxychloroquine, this treatment for it, and, and all this stuff, and we're sharing. I mean, we're, you know, we're both almost shouting at each other. We're all so excited. <laughs> but then I can, you know, he we went, we went on, and, and I imagine, you know, because he's this really loud guy, and he's very talkative and outgoing. I reckon for the rest of his fucking day, he was saying to everyone, yeah, nah, we don't need a lockdown, and you heard of hydroxychloroquine, and, and it's these things, man, you never know how powerful just that one little interaction could be, but it's just, it was like I went to that, it was like fucking fate or destiny put me in that fish and chip shop at that moment, at that time, just for that guy to walk in, it was just such, it was just beautiful. So, yeah, I'm feeling uh, very inspired, but I'm very curious to see how it's going to go on Wednesday. And uh, just to top off the excitement, I mean, I know I cover mostly stuff in the UK, but I do touch on what's going on in the USA because it's it's very important what happens there as well. Uh, the Trump-Biden debates are tomorrow, and I am fucking excited for that. I mean, I'm probably going to be watching them on the Wednesday because it's happening at like 2 a.m. here. So... Wednesday's going to be a big day, going to see the Trump-Biden debates, going to see what happens in the parliament with this coronavirus act, so Wednesday's looking pretty good, let's see what happens, uh, let's see what happens, the, the Trump-Biden debate, unless something happens in the next, the next day, which it could, because it's 2020, fucking dinosaurs might come in riding a meteorite into Biden's front room and then he can't do the debate, you never fucking know what can happen. But buzzing. It's going to be fucking, oh my god, it's going to be the most entertaining thing this year, I think. There will be those two debating, so very excited to see what happens. But yeah, so we'll keep it at that for today, folks, but um, let's see what happens on Wednesday, huh?